Hello everyone, Alex here. Today I'm going to show you how to create smart plan notes in Revit. For that we're going to use a generic annotation that looks like a bubble tag and then we're going to create a smart schedule that is going to be linking the information from that bubble tag. And it's going to look something pretty similar to this. So first I'm going to show you how to use the tool, how to insert the generic annotation, how to modify it, how to deal with the schedule, how to filter so you have it per sheet, etc. And then I'm going to show you how to build the actual infrastructure that's going to allow you to do that. For that, we need two things. First, we have to create the generic annotation, which is this bubble tag here, a ball tag. And then we need to see how to create that note block right here, which is going to be a schedule that's going to be pulling the parameters out of this family. Now, generic annotations versus keynotes, you're going to have to think long and hard about this. Yes, I said it. So what does that mean? Well, with a generic annotation, um, it's a little bit smart because, you know, let's say you modify this number, it will modify here in your schedule. Let's say you um, add another note, then it will add here automatically a, another line. Or uh, let's say you delete all the ball notes that are labeled 0, 1, then your note 1 would disappear from that sheet. That's pretty useful, very user friendly, uh, but it's not as powerful as Revit Keynotes. Uh, so, what's the difference? Well, Revit Keynotes are directly linked to your model, to your modeling element. So, that can be either a blessing or a curse, depending on your workflow and your mentality, right? So one thing is it's great because then you have your model element directly linked to your tags and to your notes. So let's say you delete all your laboratories, this note will also disappear. It doesn't make sense to have a tag, you know, a keynote, if the element doesn't exist in your model, right? But at the same time, you know, it can be a little bit intimidating for new users and it can definitely be frustrating. Let's say your view range doesn't allow you to display your laboratory for some reason. If you don't have the model element visible, you cannot keynote it. So say you want to put out a bit set really quick and you just want to place a note that says, well, provide a laboratory, please price it. Uh, but then you don't have the element visible you cannot use keynotes. So, you know, they're extremely powerful, but you need to make sure you know how to use them well. And if you want to learn more about Revit keynotes, what you can do is I'm going to leave you a link in the video description. You can also just scan it or maybe I'll put it up there. Uh, and then you can compare both methods, you know, Revit keynotes versus generic annotations and then decide for yourself. Uh, or you can even do a combination of both depending on what your needs are. Hi everyone, this is Alex with BIM It Up, where we help you with professional training and coaching in mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fire protection systems, and Autodesk platforms like Revit and AutoCAD MEP. Let's get started. All right, so first I'm gonna show you how to use the tool, you know, the goal, what we want to accomplish. And then I'm gonna show you how to actually build the infrastructure to be able to use it, okay? So what I have here is a testing model and I have, you know, level one, level two open. I also have the roof open and I have this isometric open. And what I want to do is I'm going to start annotating this multiple restroom that I have down here. And for that, I'm going to navigate into my families, annotation symbols, and I'm going to drop my annotation keynote tag smart schedulable and uh, first I'm going to give it a number right it's going to be zero one and now while I have it selected I want to type in the text that I want to describe this particular element so this is going to be an awesome laboratory and I want the contractor to uh, provide with water, uh, drain, vent, um, 
and I want them to follow the manufacturer's recommendation, for example. So, uh, following manufacturer's recommendation. So let's say that's my note, right? And now I want to include here a note block, right? A schedule. So I already have that schedule created. Let me show you how to do that a little later. So I'm gonna deactivate the view by double clicking outside. And I'm gonna expand my schedules here. And since this is P101, I'm gonna drag and drop this schedule right here, right? I'm gonna place it here and I see that it's working pretty nicely already. See, zero one, awesome lavatory, whatever. Um, and then the cool thing about this is that I can start copying this around and I wanna make sure that my note ball is set up to the correct sheet number because that's what I'm using to filter, all right? So P1.01, so we're on the right track. Um, and now I wanna copy this a couple of times, right? So let me just multiple here. Let's say we have that here, here, and here. And now let's go to our next note, and that will be, let's say this floor drain right here, right? So that's zero two, and it has the correct sheet number, but now this is not a lavatory, right? So this is a drain. And let's say provide with no water, right? This is a drain. So it will be just, and, and this is not a real note, this is just an example, right? So provide with drain, vent, following manufacturer's recommendation. So we're fine with that. Now we can copy this to the other drain. And then this one here would be three. And then this is, actually I can select the same one that I had for the lavatory. It's gonna have the same services and just change this from lavatory to urinal, right? And then I only have one urinal, but I have a bunch of toilets here. So this one's gonna be four. And then I'm gonna change this urinal for a toilet, right? And now since I already have the correct description, I'm gonna copy it a couple of times here. I have all my toilets. And then what else? Let's see, this one here is a janitor sink. So this one's gonna be five. Let me just tuck it a little bit to the right. And then this is gonna be a janitor sink, right? And notice that I, as I am adding notes, this is automatically populating here. So let's just add one more for fun. Um, let's say this one here is number six. And then this one here is a storm downspout. So storm downspout. And let's say install 12, let's say 18 inches above finish floor. All right. So we're done with our notes for level one. There they are. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. And now what I can do, and this is pretty powerful, is that you can copy all this generic annotations. Obviously I have to filter here, check none, generic annotations, and then copy to my clipboard. So now we go to level two. I activate my view and I paste a line to current view. Here are all my notes, right? And now I need to click on my schedule for 1.02 and drag it in here, I drop it here, hmm, and I don't see anything. Why is this happening? Well, because when I copied and pasted, I pasted the notes from level one. So those notes, let's filter this here. 
were associated to sheet number 101. But this one's 102, so let's just change it. 102. And obviously we'll remove note 6 because we don't have a storm down spot here. But now we see that we have all our notes. So we're done with level 2 already. And let's go to the roof, for example. And the roof, you know, I cannot copy paste anything. I don't have any plumbing fixtures here. But let's say you want to tag the main roof drain and the overflow, right? Activate your view. Then just go to your generic annotations under families, annotation symbols. It's right here. Drag and drop. And this would be 01 on this sheet, right? So this is 01 on this sheet. And that's the beauty of this, you know, like it's going to work the way you're expecting it to work. So if this is the first one that you're dropping here, that's the first one that will appear here. So let's add the text for this one. And this is going to be main roof drain, uh, whatever, coordinate um, roof drain body closely prior to pouring concrete right and now let's so now let's go to schedules mm, and i don't have one for the roof right but that's pretty simple i can actually just click here and i can duplicate this view can rename it this is 1.04 and this is a drainage plan for the roof, but I don't need to specify all that. But then one thing I need to keep in mind is that since this is a copy, I have to come here to filters, and then I'm gonna filter by equal to 1.04. I go back to my roof, and now I can drop this one here. And again, I don't see anything. Why am I not seeing anything? Let's see. Click here. Oh, what's my sheet number? 1.04. So let's change it. 1.04. And now I have it right here. Now let's copy it for our overflow. Copy. Okay, this is 2. And I need to change my text to overflow roof drain. And you know, I can copy this as many times as I want. Right, so let's go and for example, here I have one, and then here I have the other one, and then here one, and then here I have the other one, here I have one, and here I have the other one, and then you would copy number two. So here I have one, here I have the other one. And you know, the disadvantage of this method is that since you're not intelligently connecting this generic annotation symbol to this element, there, you know, that you, you cannot do like tag all, like I did with my smart plumbing fixture tag for roof drains, right? So this is not reading any information out of here, like we did with the keynotes in our previous video. So make sure you check that video first to see what works better for you, okay? I'm just giving you an alternative here in case you're frustrated with keynotes. So anyway, let's just finish placing our annotations here. And now we can go to our isometric and we can even tag there as well. So same procedure. Uh, let me see if I have one here. Yep, right here, drainage isometric, drag and drop, right here. Obviously, I haven't placed any notes yet, so let's go to our generic annotations here under families and just drag and drop here. So, this is pretty friendly because you can say, okay, this is my first note, right? So, it's zero, 01 and zero, 01. I know that it's a lavatory, right? But I already placed a lavatory somewhere else. So I can come here 
and here it is awesome lavatory so I just select it from here and now I simply copy all over the place and just like I mentioned to you before this is not something I would do what I would do is tag my plumbing fixtures and then associate that to a schedule but you know I'm just using it as an example to show you the tool um, okay so now we're going with two right and two was it doesn't have to be the same number that's the beauty of this let's say this is two right the toilet wasn't two in the last one but here I can click two and just select toilet from here boom and here it is oh I noticed that I forgot to change to the right sheet number which is 3.01 well no problem you know you can just select this guy select all instances visible in view and just change to the correct one which is P3.01 now you can see that we have our two notes right here so just like that we have our level 1 fully annotated level 2 fully annotated your roof fully annotated and your isometric fully annotated and then it's good to have a uh, model notes all sheets and this shows all notes so you can easily manage them right here and if you're serious about your professional training go ahead and visit us at bimitup.com at bimitup.com we offer professional training and coaching in mechanical electrical plumbing and fire protection systems we can also train you in Autodesk platforms like Revit or AutoCAD MEP. So go ahead and visit us at bimitup.com or send me an email directly to the email you see on screen and let us know how we can help you achieve your professional goals. All right, so now let's set up the infrastructure for that to work. So let's first create the, the node bubble. So we're gonna create a new family, so new, family let's go to autodesk revit family templates english imperial let's go into annotation generic annotation open now let's get rid of this and let's first create a few parameters here so we go here to new new parameter and let's call this one uh, note number and this is gonna be we can keep the discipline as common type of parameter it's gonna be text and we can group the parameter under text as well it's gonna be an instance parameter and a default number let's say xx let's now create another parameter that's going to be the note text discipline is also common type of parameter is text group parameter under text that's fine and here let's just put this default value here a few dashes uh, let's create another parameter now these are the two parameters that we really care about the note number that's going to be inside of the annotation bubble and then the note text which is going to display in that schedule this is actually the the, the note that we want uh, but in addition to that we want to create a note sheet number which is going to help us filter sheet by sheet. I believe in 2023, this parameter won't be needed. I want to run a test, uh, probably run it next week. So for those of you who have 2023, you might not need this parameter. But I'm um, just running the worst case scenario here. Uh, discipline, we can keep it under common. Type of parameter is also going to be a text parameter and it's also an instance parameter make sure that uh, this one was also an instance parameter so we have let me just check 
note number, instance, perfect, instance, instance. All right, now we want to create a label. So create label. Zoom in a little bit here and let's just place it like in the center of that. And the only thing we want to display here is the note number. So I'm going to add it. Um, I'm going to use a sample value of XX. Let me see the size is seems a little bit too big. So just go like that. I'm okay with 330 seconds, but I will edit the type and the width factor. I actually want it to be 0 0.75 and everything else is okay. And now let's create a little bubble around it. So you can get fancy, you know, you can do a hexagon or whatever you, whatever turns you on. You know, that's good enough. And now we need to save it as something. So save as. I'm just gonna save it in the desktop for now. It's gonna be AJS, which are my initials. Tag, which is the purpose that it's serving. It's not really a tag, but annotation. It's a generic annotation. So it's an annotation keynote. Let's call it smart schedulable. You know, just to give it a name. And I'm gonna make this available for you right here if you want to download it. If you don't want to go through the trouble of creating it. I'm gonna create a new project. Just to test it out. And I'm gonna get this guy and I'm gonna load it into the project. Just gonna paste it here. And uh, this one's gonna be, say, 01. Then just the note text is gonna be this is the text for note one. I'm going to copy this to my clipboard because I'm going to copy this over and then it's going to be note 2 and then that's going to be 2 and I'm going to copy this over a few times and say 3 of those and now similarly we have note 3 and then the text for note 3 is the same thing but instead of 1 or 2 is 3 just a test and let's say we have a couple of those right now we need to create the schedule that is going to display the the note block so for that let's just create a new sheet first to drop it there say that's okay now we want to create our note schedule. Let me rename this as, let's say this is uh, P101, right? So let's go ahead and go to view, schedule. It's gonna be a note block. And now from this generic annotations, I'm gonna select the one that I just created. And I'm gonna call this one sheet views all and that's the one that's going to contain all the notes from all the sheets all together from the available fields we want to include the note number for sure first then the note text immediately adjacent to it and then we're going to add the note sheet number that's going to help us filter by sheet so for now I'll click ok and here are all my notes right notice that you have two repeated three times and three repeated two times because you have that here, right? Three and two. Now what we can do is 
come here to schedules and then duplicate this one and then to this one we're gonna say all right this is P 101 right and then on this one we do want to filter well first let, let's go to sorting and grouping first we don't want to itemize every instance right we want two to appear only one time not three times so let's get rid of that uh, we want to sort by the note number um, let's see if we need any of that later and one thing we want to do is we do want to filter now by sheet number and that sheet number has to be equal to this is P101 so so P101 click OK and then this became all blank and it makes sense because what happened is that yes here are all my notes but remember note sheet number was blanked here so let's go ahead and go back to the sheet right and then here in the sheet I'm going to activate the view I'm going to select all this and I'm going to make this part of note sheet number P101 once I do that now my schedule is populating right so that's looking pretty good let's go ahead and drop P101 into my sheet and here it is notice that if I go ahead and I delete note 1 for example that doesn't exist here anymore right so let me click on do the same way if I delete all the notes 3 then that gets deleted from here notice also that if for some reason here on note 3 instead of having this is the text for note 3 I have something else when I go to my block it's giving me some kind of error right because Revit is going insane thinking well you're telling me that the same thing is two different things so this is actually good because this is alerting you of some inconsistencies so what you would want to do is you find which one's the one that's the correct one and you say okay this one note 3 this is actually what I want this one had something else that's not what I want what I want is this one right and now they both match and my schedule is reporting so I would do a similar situation for each sheet right this is P101 I would have the same for P102 P103 and so on and then here is where you have all the notes from all the sheets all right now uh, you also want to format this a little bit differently most likely right so we can we can work on that for example most likely you won't want to display this right the this is just being used for filtering so you do want it in the schedule but maybe we don't want to show it right so let's go back to our schedule and then here under formatting we can select this here and we can make it a hidden field and then when we go back here we don't see it let's see what else do we want to do we probably don't want to see this here so let's go back to our schedule formatting actually appearance let's uncheck show headers let's see what that does that's pretty good probably want to insert a blank line in between let's see how this is looking not bad so probably make this a little bit wider and obviously if you type more stuff this will format well like we can actually test it out like more text just to test out formatting 
and then we can copy this right here and we can copy it here as well let's see that's looking way better let's see what else we'll probably want this a little bit more centered so let's come here to formatting and then note number line it to the center that's pretty good and let's get rid of this grid lines so I think that's here under appearance uh, yeah grid lines take them off that's looking pretty good and that's basically the idea let's just add a couple more just to test it out a little further so you have note 4 here and then and then that would be to note 4 and then you could have several of those and here it is and then I'm just gonna save this as a project I'm gonna call it generic annotation schedule obviously with an AJS in front of it and this will include not only the annotation bubble the smart annotation bubble but also a test schedule that you can download at BIM it up and you can download it like right here hopefully I can place a link right here or if not in the video description below I hope that you found this useful and that you enjoyed it.